problem in this country. It's called Muslims. We know our current president is one. Right. You know he's not even an American. We need this first question. This is the man. First question. But anyway, we have training camps growing where they want to kill us. Mm -hmm. That's my question. When can we get rid of it? We're going to be looking at a lot of different things. Donald Trump on the campaign trail in Rochester, New Hampshire for a town hall meeting. The exchange we just witnessed has prompted outrage from several mainstream media outlets. You see, Donald Trump, as we just heard, did not dispute an audience member after that man called our president a Muslim. So is this a mistake from which Donald cannot recover? For more, let's bring in our panel. Skyping in from the volunteer state of Tennessee, the news director for the Tea Party News Network, Scotty Nell Hughes. And from Newsmax, New York, senior political contributor for Forbes.com and co-host of the Daily Wrap right here on Newsmax TV, our own Rick Unger. You know, Scotty Nell, this is interesting. Trump is now in trouble for something he didn't say? Your, yeah. your take on this. You know what? He can't win. He says too much, they get in trouble. He says he doesn't say enough, he gets in trouble. You know, this whole thing, I, you know, that we want to say it's blamed on the media. I don't blame it exactly on the media. I blame it on the politicians. No one would be talking about this right now if Hillary Clinton wouldn't have gotten out there and immediately tweeted it out, which makes me beg the question from Hillary. Is it a good or a bad thing to be considered Muslim? Because the way the, she's acting it almost seems like that's an insult which is far from what Donald did or how he handled it, which is what I thought was very diplomatically and just skimmed over it and kept going. Well, Rick, we, uh, we saw that exchange, and uh, Andy Dean, who, of course, used to work for Donald Trump, says it's pretty clear Trump didn't agree with the man and was laughing him off. Is that too charitable an assessment? Look, you know, everybody's focusing on this whole thing about the president. What I heard when I listened to what that man asked, he asked, he asked Donald Trump, when can we get rid of American Muslims? Gee, that kind of tickles a response. I mean, you're both constitutionalists. Is that what we do in America? Would it have been too hard for Mr. Trump to say in the United States, we don't get rid of people because of their religious beliefs? He, that, but Maybe now you mischaracterized the question. Now let, let's go back. The question was this. But anyway, we have training camps growing. Now there's a real difference, as you know, between constitutional freedom of religion and the possibility that there could be paramilitary training camps. Any number of media outlets have reported on that, and that at least was a legitimate question. Was it not, Scotty Nell? It was, absolutely. And that's the, that's the question. And Donald, I think, handled it very diplomatically. Listen, Rick, uh, you know, I like your answer. It's a great answer. But I'm afraid if Donald would have said, and Mr. Trump would have said that answer, it would have opened up an entire can of worms that you could not win in a town hall setting like that. You couldn't go into the which, different which points Which can of worms it. would it open? That it would have opened that whole idea. Well, no, it, it would have opened up a whole thing about Islamic extremists and those things that we're finding out right now. I mean, we're hearing story after story of ISIS members recruited over here. We're hearing of Islamic extremists having actions like what we saw in the factory in Oklahoma or what happened in Chattanooga. So why sit there and open that can of worms? I think that Mr. Trump actually showed great restraint, great dipl diplomatic relations when he just said, you know what, not going to mess with that here. I'm just going to, I don't want to disrespect, which is in a way I think what Ms., uh, Mr. McCain Senator McCain did in 2008. He disrespected that entire audience. He disrespected the woman when he took the microphone away from her. He, Mr. Trump didn't want to do that. He said, you know what? We're just going to move on. We're not even going to make that an issue of this town hall. And yet, well, look, every, everybody's obsession, entitled to their become, point of view. Well, that is true. But everybody's I mean, entitled to their point Trump. of view. But that's a heck of a stretch. And, and, and I don't think that Senator McCain disrespected anybody when he did that. Back in 2008, I thought he was incredibly polite and, and did the right thing. I, you know, you can't how just can take a that? piece of what this man... Wait, wait, wait. You can, I don't know how you can take just a piece of what this man said. He started out his whole thing, by, his whole speech, by saying, we have Muslims in this country. And yes, we do have Muslims in this country, and we have Christians, and we have Jews, and we have people who believe in Hinduism. We have all sorts of people in this country, and thank God we live in a country where our Constitution says that if we're Americans, we can practice whatever religion that we want. Why wasn't that man asking about Christian 
Russian militias that have been formed over the years and that were training just in case the government erupted against them. What well, you know, come on, guys. Well, Can't we on, Rick, at don't, least don't on something there like this? Go go last there. word on this, Scotty Nell, from you. Go ahead, Scotty Nell. Don't sit there and say, don't try to make, you know, why didn't he ask about Christian? Because the last time I checked, there's not been any Christians that have been out there slashing people's necks or going in front of, uh, going in front of militants. It had nothing to do with this question. So don't sit there and say, completely you irrelevant the to the training. point. You brought completely it up. Completely irrelevant to the point. Subjects. Completely irrelevant. No, it's not. It's you not brought it up. Point. But it's not relevant. It's just I'll, not I'll, relevant. I'll, 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 you don't, have, you don't have to use words yes. to answer your question. The reason why there's a concern, 9-11, and the subsequent establishment of those types of camps. But it does speak volumes. So you're because comfortable no, no, with we somebody do saying, remember, when are no, we no, going to throw make this out very the clear. Let's but make this very what, clear. Everyone has freedom exactly of religion. He exactly. And he did and not, he asked about training opinion. camps, but more than that, and this brings us to something that was very troubling at the outset of the current administration, because Janet Napolitano is the first Secretary of Homeland Security, trained her fire on whom? Returning veterans and so-called Christian extremists. So, Rick, were you comfortable with that? Is that the vigilance that we should have? Fifteen seconds to you, Rick, and fifteen to Scotty Nell to finish. I, I, guys, I would think this would be one of those issues where we could all agree that when somebody stands up in a crowd and asks about throwing out American Muslims, and I got to tell you, most conservatives I've spoken to today, people like yourselves, have agreed completely that's what the man was saying, <laughs> and have said, yeah, Absolutely. you know, you stand up for the Wait, Constitution. We'll agree to disagree. Sadly, the filibuster is there. We have to end it. We'll be back.